In this video, we're going to take a look at dividing rational expressions. Now, dividing rational expressions is rooted in dividing fractions. So if we can remember the rules for dividing fractions, also working with uh, variables with exponents like this and simplifying stuff like that, as well as factoring when we have a trinomial, then we can be in great shape with these rational expressions and division. So let's take a look at this first one right here. And the first thing we want to do, just like dividing fractions, this is fractions, we're going to do keep, change, flip. That means we keep the first one. So that's going to be 5j squared, k squared, over, oops, not quite cooperating here, k squared, over 3j, k to the fifth. Then I'm going to change the multiplication to division. So I have times. And then I'm going to flip. I'm going to take the reciprocal of the second one. So this is going to be 9, oops, 9, j to the third. Come on, you bugger. j to the third over 10, j squared, k. All right. So, now it just becomes multiplying rational expressions. And remember, to multiply fractions, we just go ahead and we multiply straight across on the top and the bottom. Now, I'm going to switch colors just so we can kind of try and keep some of this stuff straight here. Remember that we can simplify before we multiply across, or we can simplify after. Or we could do a combination of those two things. I see some things that can definitely cancel out, so I want to take care of those. I have a 3 and a 9, so this is going to cancel to become a 1. If I divide both those by 3, that will become a 3. Then I've got this 5 and 10. That's going to be a 1. And then down here, I've got a 2. Okay. So then, let's see. I've got some variable stuff. There's a j squared here and a j squared here. Those can cancel out, and those are just ones. So we got rid of that. Let's see. Then I've got some Ks, and I'm going to hold on to those for a second. And the reason I do that is because sometimes when we start simplifying between multiple different variables, like here we've got two different Ks on the bottom and a K on the top. Here we've got the Js on the top and the bottom and we start canceling out the exponents, so we've got all kinds of little numbers written here, and we start to lose track of what really we're working with. So what I want to do now is just bring it all back together and see where we're at exactly. So I'm going to multiply the integers that are sitting out front here. I've got 1 times this 3, so I've got 3. Then the variables, well, we've got a j to the third and a k squared left on top. So j to the third and k squared. Then on the bottom, I have, well, let's see. We've got a 2 there, so let's bring that along. And then we've got a j. It's the only j that I see left. And then we've got k to the fifth times k. Well, that's going to be k to the sixth. Remember, when we're multiplying, we add the exponents. So then we've got that. Okay, now... I can see that I've got J's on the top and bottom and K's on the top and bottom. I want those to clean that up a little bit. We need to cancel some stuff out. So what I want to do at this point is just simplify those things. So the 3 and the 2, well, that's just going to stay as it is. 3 over 2. Can't simplify that any further. I have 3 J's being multiplied on top, J to the 3rd divided by j, well that's going to leave me with two j's on top that are multiplied, so j squared, then k squared over k to the sixth. Well there's six k's on the bottom being multiplied, two on top, I can cancel two of those out to get k to the fourth. Okay, then I take a look, anything else I can simplify? Nope, that's it. So I'm all set there. Alright, then let's go on to this bottom one, see what we can do here. Again, first step, keep, change, flip. Keep the first fraction, so we have x plus 10. Then change the division 
to multiplication. Now, huh, that doesn't look like a fraction. How can I make it a fraction? Well, put it over 1. So if I do that, I can certainly flip that, and that's going to be 1 over x squared minus 100. Now, in order to save steps here, let's think about that for a second. What is x squared minus 100? That's a difference of squares. And remember, a difference of squares is going to factor into this one will be x plus 10 and x minus 10. And remember, if you don't believe me, you can always foil that back and find that you end up there. Okay, then we take a look. Is there anything on the top and bottom? Well, sure. We've got an x plus 10 here and an x plus 10 there. Let's cancel those out. Anything else? Nope, doesn't appear so. So then we multiply straight across. And again, remember, when these cancel out, we can throw a 1 there if you'd like. Multiply straight across and end up with 1 over. We have an x squared times x minus 10. Well, I could leave it like this. Or we can distribute that x squared through there. Oh, my tablet is really not cooperating with me tonight. Holy cow. It's kind of a grumpy little Gus here. All right, then I can leave this like this or I could distribute that x squared through. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I have 1 over x squared times x is x to the third and then x squared times negative 10 is 10 neg minus 10 x squared. Okay? Anything further I can do there? Nope. So there it is. All right, then Let's take a look at this last one up on top here. Again, start by doing keep change flip. We keep the first one, so x squared over x minus 3. Change the division to multiplication. And then we flip on this side. And what I notice is this is a trinomial that appears like it might factor. Let's see. I'm looking for factors of 15 with a difference of 2. Huh, think about that for a second. Did you think of some factors of 15 with a difference of 2? 5 and 3? Absolutely. So it's going to break up. It's going to factor into x and x. Signs are going to be plus and minus because that's minus. Then those factors, 5 and 3, that get us a positive 2. So I need the larger factor to go with the sign I want to end up with. And remember, that comes from the middle terms. If we FOIL that, let me make a decent 5 there. If we FOIL this out, those middle terms are going to combine. We're going to have 5x and we're going to have minus 3x, which will combine to be 2x. Okay, then on the bottom, I've got x plus 5. All right, now let's take a look what we share on the top and bottom. Well, quite a few things actually. We've got an x plus 5 there and an x plus 5 there. Those are going to cancel out. x minus 3 and x minus 3, those are gone. Again, remember these could all be 1s. Sometimes I don't write those just to eliminate the, some markings as we try and make sense of all these things. Then x squared, uh, nothing left on the bottom, so that is what it is. So it's just equal to x squared. Whoops, x squared, there we are. Okay, so dividing rational expressions, rooted in dividing fractions. And remember to divide fractions, we do keep, change, and flip. So we kept the first term, changed the division to multiplication, and flipped the second term. From there, we can simplify either before, after, or a combination thereof, and then multiplying across those fractions. Remember, we just multiply straight across top and bottom, simplify what we can, and there we've got it. What you're going to find a lot of times is when things factor, like here we had this factor and some of the stuff canceled out, you're going to find that quite often. So. Be sure you've got your factoring skills uh, shined up and dusted off and ready to roll, and you'll be in great shape with these. Hope this video was helpful. Keep working hard. 
You can do anything you put your mind to. I know it. <laughs>